Welcome back, friends of the channel. This is Dean Marathusha with Dice Never Lie. Wanted to thank everybody who has been patiently waiting for our next upload. I believe it has been about a month here. Uh, a lot of things have kind of been going on that got me distracted and got me kind of pulled away. And I'm currently in the process of develop a new homebrew world. Uh, so we're kind of moving away from Tolis and some of the published campaigns that I've done in the past and looking to open things up into a sandboxy and a homebrew world. So we've got about three sessions here kind of backlogged. Uh, I'm recently back from a vacation and we're kind of getting everything back into the normal role. Uh, so I wanted to thank everybody for sticking around, subscribing to the channel. Uh, please don't hesitate to throw out those likes, comments, and subscriptions for us. I uh, really appreciate everything you do to keep the channel relevant there. I'm looking to do everything I can to uh, bring as many games as possible uh, to as many people as possible here. And in the long run, at present, that's a pay-to-play channel. Um, towards the future here, I'd like to change it over towards uh, just kind of like tipping, pay what you can. And in the future, I would love to support things purely with the channel uh, and run games daily. There's a lot of different options there, and it all kind of comes with the growth, how things develop here. Uh, so I'd like to continue to grow here. Thank everybody who does stick around to watch pr uh, present and past players as well for taking the time to listen to these as recap sessions. There's a lot of different ways to consume the media that we're putting out there, uh, and I just wanted to make sure to thank everybody for sticking around there, um, even as I was kind of away from producing the content and actually putting the current sessions out. Uh, but again, this is going to serve as a little bit of an intro here as I get these next three out. Uh, this weekend we'll be picking up with a new session here uh, inside of Tola still, and then hopefully early in April we will be starting in our new world, in our new setting, uh, and seeing about growing from there. Uh, in a place where it's kind of my free reign to grow things. Uh, we can kind of step away from pre-published things. Uh, I think there's a lot of reason for doing that. Um, and I'm very excited for it. So I hope you all continue with us here at Dice and Rely. Uh, again, this is DM Marathusha. Thank you very much for listening. Enjoy. Alrighty then. So, my bad on the delay there, guys. Uh, but I think... With my coffee brewed, I should be all set. Do you all have any thoughts or things before I do a recap? Um, what are we all thinking here? Oh yeah, no worries. I'm uh, I still didn't do my spells for uh, third level yet, so I was just kind of reading through them and kind of messing with it. I have one picked. Uh, is it okay if I just pick the other one whenever I figure it out? Ooh, I think right. I actually figured out how much experience you guys got for that session, and I may not have actually given it to you. Do you what experience is uh, Jinx at right now? Uh, it's like the smallest number ever, but it looks like nine hundred. Uh, if you click on the, what is it? I think just to the right of your character. There's like an edit button that lets you bring up experience. Oh yeah, 900, yep. And that's like right at the base of level 3? Like you're at the lowest level of level 3? Uh, well, honestly, like the in experience bar says between 900 and then it has like the dash 2700. But I can't see, yeah. there's no... Yeah, there's no, like, difference in, like, color on the bar, though. Like, how a bar would Yeah, because you're just at 900. You're at, like, 905 or something like that. Oh, okay, that makes sense. So, yeah, it's not showing up at all, but it's probably just because I'm literally just leveled. Yeah, so I did not give you guys experience for last session yet. So, um, if you guys, if you go into that same place, and then if, Chris, if you click, I think, on your character's name... And then manage experience. Um, I'm going to have you guys each add 750 experience. And that just about 
puts me at level four. Just below for now, though? No, actually, just just above, like 19. Speed gotcha. above. Um, so, yeah, you can... Uh, I think for you, we've been just doing the like rolling day by day. If you're still digging that, um, you can go for that. Um, if you have anything, trying to think what a ranger needs at level four, I think that's just like an ASI for you. So yeah. if you want to take some time to think about that, you don't have to choose it today. Um, but if you just kind of figure something out on the way, you're welcome to choose it as well. I need love for it. It keeps, yeah, it's just an ASI. So I think I know what I want for that already. So, just to recap things, uh, last week you guys basically started off from the moment where you had killed the skeletal figure who was manipulating uh, this object and basically trying to finish off a ritual as you guys were searching through the ship, the Jewel of Parnate, uh, or Parnate's Jewel. Uh, while you were going through the ship uh, afterwards, there were different points where basically the bowl was still charged with energy, kind of singing with this power within it. Um, it was essentially like spinning and making this vibration um, there was essentially like a distracting thought into itself. Uh, it kind of put you guys on edge in many ways uh, by wrapping the object with some silks and kind of stowing it in a backpack. You kind of uh, bypassed the situation as you guys saw it, but uh, it basically left you where you didn't necessarily do a thorough searching of the ship. You did search a lot of the ship. Uh, but you basically got on and got out of that place, uh, leaving it behind and trying to figure out what you could do with this object that seemed to be charged with some sort of arcane power. In the process of addressing that situation, uh, you guys would essentially choose to uh, uh, head off to the Guildsman's District and look for Brother Anversov, who the Demarkis had previously kind of had uh, meetings with. And uh, Brother Anversov, just being one of the priests at St. Oh, I always forget which church he's at. Uh, St. Darius's Chapel in the Guildsman District. Uh, you guys would essentially go there, uh, kind of pass over the object. He would manipulate it in some similar ways. Uh, he would react to it a little bit differently in other ways. Uh, but you would kind of come to realize that he was pretty ignorant of what this thing was, uh, but was certainly willing to kind of take it uh, and turn it over to people in the church of Lothian who might be more adept at whatever this thing was. Uh, and you kind of release it from your possession there and moved on. We then picked up, I think, taking it into the present, because we we're kind of continuing that all from the same day um, of what would be two weeks ago our time. Uh, and then, like, essentially this last seven days ago now, uh, you all essentially ventured into the undercroft of the Goblin Hide, into the tunnels, and explored the cave with the waterway in it, uh, and eventually found that while there is a massive amount of water in that uh, pond, lake, ocean, Whatever it is beneath this place, it is massive, and that itself might warrant some exploration. Uh, but you basically followed that little cave tunnel area to another uh, sort of stair down into another area of what is the kind of entire uh, 
undercity of Tolis. And that's essentially where we left off there. So for now, we can pick up with the idea of you guys have had another week pass by. Uh, this is another opportunity for Jinx to have been gambling, another opportunity for Malchin to decide, are you still running as security for the Silken Sail? Uh, what have you guys in mind as far as your downtime in between these weeks? And then what do you guys have in mind as to what you want to investigate today? Are we assuming that Malchin is continuing to work for like one gold a week at the Silken Sale? Yeah, I think he would do that still. And is Jinx heading off to kind of gamble away whatever money he has? Uh, yeah, two things. So he's going to definitely take a shot and uh, try to hit the big one. But uh, he's going to make a little pit stop. Uh, you may not know this about Jinx, uh, but he is actually like a good-hearted fella. And he takes a lot of his like earnings and winnings and like donates them uh, to like a whatever equivalents of like an orphanage or the opposite of kind of like the gang. So there's no shortage of those things in Tolis. Uh, that might be warranting of your charity. Uh, if you wanted within the Warrens, um, damn, I think it is the chapel. No, Good. one of the organizations is 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 active in the Warrens. Uh, and takes care of orphans. Um, the Order of Daira. Uh, they are a group who takes care of orphans in the slum there. Um, and they're basically an order of knights who operate within there. Um, and uh, work with the Churches of Gaian, uh, which is just another deity inside of Tolis itself. Uh, otherwise, you could search out another organization who is more largely active within the city itself, not necessarily simply the Warrens. Any thoughts on that? Um, yeah, maybe, I guess, like, that sounds pretty good for sure, but maybe, like, more, like, local, you know what I mean? Kind of like, you know, he's kind of well-known around the orphanage. When he stops by, everybody gets all excited because he's a clown, you know? Well, that's up to you then. Where have you spent most of your time inside the city in the past? Um, I would imagine that I sort of have just kind of lingered around this same area. I mean, bounced around a little bit, performed in, you know, entertained in different bars, been, you know, all kinds of random gigs and stuff. So I think just somewhere around in the city. I hadn't done like super detailed background for him or anything. Well, that's what I'm saying. This is the time to flesh that out because you've got a city of like 75,000 people. Um, you can be an absolute nobody and still be well known to the people who know you. So when you think about um, what's, the, you... what's the um dogs names again? The cruel dogs or whatever? The pale dogs are the gang in the war. Yeah, yeah, the pale dog. So, um, where is that all just in like the wardens right on like uh right below the dock area on the map? Yeah, the Warrens is just a tiny little spot of this city. Um, and it's that's the whole slum area. Okay, I got you. Well, yeah, I mean if there there probably wouldn't be something like that in that specific part, but you know, just some kind of local uh, spot around there. I'm trying to, like, flesh out some answers what you think. Is this oh, Warrens that you have spent most of your life around? Yeah, I think that sounds pretty good. So then that group is probably an effective group for you to donate to. If you're from the Warrens, you've lived through all of this. Otherwise, you're from somewhere else in the city. 
Oh no, that sounds good. I think he would have like been from this like local area, kind of a rough spot and everything. I mean, he's like borderline, like not really a criminal, but you know, been in the streets. Yeah, so the Order of Daira is a all-female order. Um, yeah, the children and orphanages. Um, yeah, I mean, that one sounds pretty good. Yeah, I'm not going to look, look too deep into it. I'm just skimming instead of reading it. But I also feel like um, they don't necessarily just work in... Uh, in the Warrens, either. Well, I mean, there might be like a local branch or something like that, you know. Yeah, it actually looks like Saint Dyra is there. They are a part of the Church of Lothian. Um, yeah, so they definitely fit quite well. Um, and then in the long run. Yeah, it doesn't look like they have a specific church that is theirs. Maybe that's what the chapel of Gayen is. Uh, but in the long run, yeah, the Order of Daira is a perfectly functional um, group for you to kind of donate to. Uh, might be the type of thing that this is where you start to recognize that, like, from your influence, you always experience them in the Warrens. But as you go out more deeper into the rest of the city, uh, you do start to see the same, um, maybe not the exact same women. Perhaps they actually have like locales that are theirs, so they get to know people better. Um, but perhaps you start to recognize uh, the same order, um, you know, because they would all wear similar garb. Um, they're all clerics and paladins of different levels of power, um, and you would start to recognize them um, as running orphanages. orphanages and schools like in other parts of the city as well all right sounds uh, good you, to me. do you have a particular one that you are attached to is there a specific uh like effectively none who you are looking to meet from the order of direct uh not necessarily at this time and how much are you donating to the order of direct Oh, uh, we'll find out. I have to try to double my money first. All right, gambling first. Gotcha. Uh, what would you like to do? Just doing it on like a single um, go, basically D twenties uh, uh, percentiles. Uh yeah, just do a roll off one. Yeah, that sounds good. Gotcha. So D twenty to see who wins, and the D one hundred to see how much of. Um, what you're gambling, you lose or gain from it. Um, and this is basically like a per day. So you can do this up to seven times is what I'll go for there. Uh, All right, I'm going to roll the D20 and the D100 at the same time. All right, I'm going to do a 20 gold gamble. Ooh, my dice roller is taking some time to think. Uh, the 20s and 8s. Um, I could roll a normal die, but for some reason my die roller is non-functional. My bot as well. All right. Uh, I got a 14. So you said the d20 from yours was an 8? Yeah, and then it's uh, 83 is the 100. So what is that? Like um, 16 gold-ish? 17 gold, probably? All right, and I'll just do it uh, like one more time for... Uh, for 20 again. Gotcha, same thing, do D20 and a 100. <laughs> it's a four. I rolled a six, so it'll be a loss again. And for another 82, so 
What's that? Like, that's probably the 15 or 16 gold loss. All right, and then I'm going to donate seven to the uh, orphanage. All right, I'm good. Uh, roll a D20 for me. Uh, that was the jinx, my bad. It's 11. Uh, so, yeah, when you're heading into the Warrens and kind of searching out for this area uh, where where you kind of experience them um, coming to care for those in need, um, you do find a few of the nuns uh, of the sister of the Order of Daira uh, there, uh, one of them being um, uh, Sister Daira. Uh, and it's Sister Dyra Margaret, um, and she kind of like nods to you as you kind of like approach, and you see like a little bit of a recognition in her eyes uh, as she sees you, and passing over the gold to her like a little purse, uh, she'll kind of like smile and uh, with a little bit of a recognition to you, um, she'll kind of thank you with um. It's awfully good to see you again, and she's going to call you a name that you probably don't go by anymore, uh, since you go by Jinx, so you can decide whatever that name is uh, that is a little bit more proper uh, to what you might have been named, uh, like, as an orphan in the orphanage. It might not even belong to you, um, but she basically calls you as that name, essentially recognizing you. Uh, and when you um, kind of approach, she will bless you, and you can have a single use, I guess realistically, take inspiration for this, um, better than giving you like a spell that you have to use within a certain amount of time. Nice, all right. Uh, do you just do it as a reroll? Yeah, inspiration now is uh, you can use it ahead of time and give yourself advantage. Um, if you want to reroll stuff, I can allow that based on what you're doing. Um, but in a, in essence, it is give yourself advantage ahead of time. Um, but the other thing is, is like when you roll a d20, if you get a one, you get advantage anyways. Um, so if you've got advantage, you can give it to Chris. Um, otherwise it's just one of those things like advantage is meant to be something that rolls, uh, and you use regularly because theoretically getting ones gives it to you anyways. Um, so just kind of be ready to use it as well. Do you have a name in mind, or can that be something that you can think of over the week here? Uh, I didn't really do anything like that, but I can come up with something over the uh, uh, like break or whatever. I like flushed out his background decently, uh, but definitely will need to fill in some details. Gotcha. So then if we return to uh, you both as a group here, uh, essentially kind of grouping up at the Goblin Safe House, uh, perhaps with the two of you being the uh, people, maybe Jinx has gone down to the Silken Sail. Do you guys have any thoughts on where you would be grouping up, where you would like to start today from? I mean, if he's, like, working a nine-to-fiver or something like that, uh, depending on, like, what time of day it is, uh, or I can just swing by to uh, meet up with him. He works for the crab hammer as security. He's a bouncer. Uh, Chris, were those your hit points for the day? You can re-roll that one if that was your hit dice. Yeah, that was my hit dice. I'll re-roll the one. Wasn't the um, silken sale also like a uh, like an inn? No, no, that's where the silken sale is very much different than the crooked skinner. They were otherwise kind of the same in that they were both 
warehouses turned into something else. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, depending on what we're trying to do, um, if we're like getting started at like the beginning of a day or whatever, we can just be like kind of at the goblin house, getting ready to do whatever, getting some trouble. Well, like I said, like the two of you are effectively bar people. If you guys want to start your day, like on the night where you're actually at the tavern, that's perfectly fine. If you guys want to wake up hungover at the silken sale, that's perfectly fine. Uh, did you have anything uh, like planned or in mind today, Chris, that you wanted to do? Not really. I mean, maybe explore more under the Goblin House or just find more rats. <laughs> Basically, I mean, not really thought too hard about it. We could do, uh, like, you know, just kind of grind a little bit, or we could do, like, some kind of side quest. You have any uh, potential, like, uh, arcs prepared or anything, Gerard, as far as, uh, like, the bounty or anything like that? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that are potential threads for you guys. I do not have something specifically prepared right now. Well, I mean, I don't want to necessarily deviate too much from our current arc uh, or our current sort of like mission or whatever. Um, so do you want to just get a little grind on? Do a little battling right now, Chris? Or What do you guys suppose your current mission is? Well, we sort of wrapped up the ghost ship and everything, at least... For now. And I would imagine uh like Davros probably is a little more of like a connection with uh the smuggling ring and everything. So we can kind of put that off to like next week or whatever. Alright. Um Yeah, so let's just pick up in the North Market. You guys can go underneath and continue to explore underneath there. You can go to uh, any place in the city and find sewers. Um, what do you want to do? Well, to be honest, I uh, started thinking about uh, the rat hunting. I mean, I guess Malshan at least would be a bit curious because he's seen like those praying rats and he's heard about like uh, no spider being like oh, the bounty for the rat tails and everything. But he's, uh, I guess it's a bit curious, like, what's going down in the sewers? So are you intrigued to where you want to head down into the same area and uh, search out that same uh, kind of group that you've been dealing with? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, Malshan would be interested in that, at least. Yeah, kind of uh, get back to, like, the area where we sort of left off before. Yeah, where we met the rat man and everything and got chased out, basically. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine they would have moved their loot, but we could always try to go back to that same spot and then just kind of pick up from there. Or... Uh, let me have the two of you roll uh, D12s. That's an 11 for me. Lens five. Uh, so you guys can group up at the uh, Northern Market Safe House, the Goblin House. Um, you can find everybody there. Uh, do you have any desire in recruiting anyone else to this mission? Or would you like to try to head in yourselves um, and do it as a duo at this point? Uh, I mean, it might not be a bad idea for us to have some kind of like uh, tank or something. Yeah, with, oh, sorry. I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't exactly do damage. I mean, I could do that. <laughs> you see the ship 
we were on. Yeah, that is true. We did level up too, so uh, we'd probably be all right. I mean, we could give it a shot if we get in too deep. We can always bail. Uh, so, uh, with basically getting yourself situated, gathering everything up, um, you got, basically, you remember heading down into the sewers from the Guildsman District. Uh, let me get one or both of you, if you've got proficiency in survival, to do a survival check. If you don't have survival, just an intelligence. Yeah, I rolled for a total of 14. From Masha and from Jinx, you don't have survival, just an intelligence. Oh, my bad. I thought you said one of us. Um, I, I'd like that half thing, so it's not actually like, sir, you know what I mean? Yeah, that jack of all trades. Yeah, you can essentially decide with that. Okay, so I got nine total. Alrighty. Um, so let me have the two of you roll a D eight. I got a three. And I got an eight. Alrighty. Uh and then let me have one of you roll a I think D ten. Oh, you know I would have rolled like a two or a three. <laughs> yeah, I got an eight. Again. That's not to scale at all. I bet. Give me. Some. All right, so I ended up going with hold person and suggestion. I was thinking about invisibility, though. That's pretty good. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go hold person and invisibility. I could see that being useful. Why is it not updating this map? Are you a pure ranger, Malchin? Yeah, that I am. You ever play one before? Or? Oh, don't think so. I think this is my first ranger. Nice. There's there's some pretty sweet stuff for him. I've only played like one time at like super low level with them, but uh, they're they've always been like pretty intriguing as like characters. Yeah, certainly. I mean, I I like it. I like the stuff they added to it like the canny things and that yeah i can't remember exactly what all the new changes were but i saw like a you know short D, &D video on it and it was pretty it seemed pretty neat at the time when i watched it i think it's like the they fit more into the range of like in the one D and D, where more like an expert class, I think they called it. They get one uh, expertise, and they get uh, like, yeah, at level six, I think they get more movement speed, and like, and then they get climbing and swimming speed as well. Oh, so that's pretty cool. They just get like a bunch of base bonuses now. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Yeah, and then at level 10, they have like a mini, uh, like second wind they can use. Uh, as well, that they can recover from like exhaustion even from a short rest instead of a long rest. Oh, that's pretty cool. That second wind is awesome, so any version of that sounds good. Especially if like you're in a situation where the whole party's exhausted, it's nice for you to be able to like shrug it off so at least somebody's decent. Yeah. It helps. I played like in another campaign and I've played a monk and I think I've Face of something that gave exhaustion at hit, and I think I got to like four points of exhaustion in that fight. I was like, I am useless. <laughs> it's pretty cruel. Yeah, were you fighting a lich or something? <laughs> no, I mean it's uh, 
what is it, the Call of the Neverdeep, actually, like the campaign, and fought oh, against yeah. like a corrupted shark, and that, that just fucked me up. All right. Um, so this match will be good here. Um, so you guys have gone down into the sewers. Um, you can like rejoin each other on similar sides. Uh, as a kind of reminder, like the east west are the ones where water is flowing west to east. They are flowing downhill towards the ocean. Most of the flow in the city is east to west or west to east rather. Uh, the north to south sewers are usually like custom built by locals who at some point needed to essentially bypass clogs in the system. Um, so they often end up with these like hatch setups where you're essentially searching through the sewers uh, and they have these little cross paths. So you usually have much less flow that is moving north to south. If anything, those tend to be where water stagnates uh, while it flows in the other ways. Um, but otherwise, you guys should be able to see yourselves in the far northwest. Uh, and, you know, you can decide from here, like, how you would like to march. I assume you're going to go marching in front of Jinx. Uh, what you're doing for light. Um, you guys can make all of those decisions here. So what are you thinking? All right, so when we come down here and it's all dark or whatever, and uh, I'm assuming at some point in time, Malcha would like prepare to light up a torch, and I'll uh, pull out the uh, glow globe, drift globe rather, and uh, I will use the canter of light uh, to emanate from it. Didn't have a chance to show off my new toy yet. I, don't know. I can see that coming in handy. That's the beauty of it is it doesn't need my hands. And uh, if I'm understanding this correctly, I can like let go of it and it will just like float. And like, does it stay with me? I'm not quite understanding it. Uh, it will stay within 60 feet of you if it can. So you can certainly walk into darkness uh, while you have it with you. Okay, I got you. So I have to like hold it in one hand and like walk with it, but it would be like the equivalence of a torch. Yeah, but like in combat, when you drop it, it's going to float. Okay, uh, sweet. I'll, I'll just do that. Drop the torch, it'll fall into water and go out. No, yeah, no, that's cool. I like it a lot. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll just do that then. I'll just like hold it up in one hand as my torch, and then I will uh, have my boomerang in the other hand. So you all are essentially investigating through these sewers. Uh, you can go to the north, to the east, to the south. Uh, what would you like to do, and uh, kind of how are you approaching these like moments forward while you are investigating the super? Did you come down here another time, or is it just the one time when we were down here? And I came... Uh, into the sewers another time before, but not in this place. Okay, I got you. And I feel like we didn't get that far, honestly, when we were here. Well, we just basically went east, and then we fought, like, the rats, and then that was pretty much it, right? We went east, and then... I think Davros knocked down a wall. Oh, that's right. And there was like that. Yeah, okay. So we'll go back that way and try to keep exp uh, expanding. Gotcha. So you're going to continue east here? Yeah. And I also like try to keep an eye out for, well, an eye and an ear out for any rats. Uh, roll a perception check. Yeah, that's a total of 13. Say with recent rains and kind of like a high flow in the sewers today, uh, you're basically kind of like listening and 
you have plenty to hear. Uh, none of it seems to be anything that would be related to rats. Um, there's far more just kind of like the commotion of the water at this point from your perspective. But otherwise, you all can kind of head down uh, this kind of hallway. Um, you start to see the next set of uh, crossroads in front of you uh, that kind of lead to the east, to the south, or to the north. Uh, you remember which way it was? South, wasn't it? Not a hundred percent sure, but I think it was south. Yeah, I can't really remember either. I got bit by that infected rat, and it was all that was on my mind. Half the time, I was just looking down to see if my leg was going to fall off. So heading down the southern corner. Uh, let me have the two of you roll d8. Another eight. Nice, you're on fire. Uh, six for me. So you can start to continue down this way, uh, effectively seeing like this path is uh, a little bit more just kind of stagnant. There's areas where there's like uh, collections of water. Um, and that's one of those things too where. These north to south ones are much rougher, kind of hewn, like in the base. So sometimes you're seeing like rough rock uh, below the sewer line uh, instead of like the east to west ones. When and if you ever see their actual base, they're often like tiled. Um, but like these, that's like rough stone in different parts. And you can definitely wonder at times like how deep some of these might be uh, when they collect water. But like you see stone kind of like collected on either side. Um, but at present, this one has no flow through it. Um, and probably about like a third of the way down around where you guys are. Um, you can see like a collection of water. Um, other than that, Malchin might be able to start to see uh, the next crossroad ahead of you guys. Um, but you basically just see like a line ahead of you. Uh no current sound or warning that there are any rats. Yeah, um, Malsha will, like, as he's walking, like, try to keep a hand on the wall, like, trying to feel out. Because he remembers that we did knock down a wall. And I think you remember that, like, it had been built up from what Davros said. Yeah, I think we might have turned too soon, though. Are we supposed to keep going straight back there? Not sure. Don't remember. Well, should we double back now and maybe just go the wrong direction, or should we keep going this way? Can we do a check to see if our characters are actually like functional? <laughs> Because I don't remember personally. I don't know if that should reflect necessarily on Jinx or not. That's up to you. Uh, that was what those survivals were. Do you guys remember where you entered these sewers from? Other than that, the sewers probably look a lot like sewers to you. Okay, I got you. Yeah, no, I don't remember exactly, but I just remember the wall. So I think Malsham will just like try to like feel out the walls as he goes. See so if can do it. an investigation check here. And that's a twelve. Uh stonework seems normal enough to you. There doesn't seem to be any reason to kind of question um, what you're walking through. But at present, nope, you don't find any sign of any doors or anything. For some reason, I think it was just a little further back if we kept going straight. Let's double back or it's going to just eat me inside thinking that we were supposed to go back there. 
All right. Well, I mean, I don't remember where it should be, so I'll follow. I figure since we don't know where we're going anyway, we might as well at least trust the feeling. Yeah. I mean, that, sure. <laughs> All right. So we're going east on the map. I, For some reason, I think that it was further down that way. Gotcha. So you can start to continue east, uh, back to where the flow is starting to like deafen you again. Um, again, like it makes like the hearing kind of being down here a little more more difficult. Um, doesn't smell as bad as it can with a high flow of water. Everything is like moving much quicker. Uh, but yeah, you guys can progress eastward. Yeah, I'm like Marshall will like continue tapping, feeling out the walls as they walk, just to see if they notice anything. Okay, do another investigation. Seventeen this time. So while you're tapping along the walls, uh, the next kind of crossroad comes into view, and this time, like while you're kind of like tapping, uh, you just kind of get like that one little like tap where. Like a little bit of like the stone just crumbles away and just kind of like take a look at it and start to recognize like this is like um effectively uh like a lime and like stone aggregate. It's effectively cement and you've like basically just kind of like knocked over a chunk of this that was kind of poorly mixed. Hey, yeah, I think I found something here. I mean, that could definitely be a good sign. Maybe we're on the right track, yeah? Yeah, I mean, the... Try, like, breaking down? Don't suppose you have a hammer? Oh. Uh, actually... I think I do have a hem, <laughs> oddly enough. I'll like search around a little bit and uh, I don't have a hammer. I have a crowbar. So I will pull out a crowbar and I'll be like, well, next best thing. But I don't know. We could probably find that hole Davros put in here if we are on the right track. Let's go just a little further. Keep testing the wall as we go. All right, I just think that they might have had time to patch up the hole, but so we could look, see if we find it. So yes, you can yeah. essentially continue on to the next crossroad. You guys can go east, west, or east, north, south. Uh, well, he's got a good good idea. If we don't see it, like, right away as we kind of, like, round the next thing, maybe we could uh, see, like, mess around with the wall a little bit if you want. Do we get the impression that, obviously, you showed us, like, the map initially, but do we get the impression that it's literally, like, uh, just, you know, cross patches, like, the whole way? Yeah, if you guys continue to the east, I am going to pick you up and put you right back over here. Yeah, right? Um, when we went through that wall before, did it take us, like, did we go down or anything? Like, I guess what I'm kind of thinking is, if it was like those cross hatches, we broke through the wall and there was like a big lake and like a bunch of other stuff. So we must have been at like the southernmost point, or it would just be more cross hatches, right? I mean, you can certainly think that. You broke into a cave um, that effectively felt vastly level. But you guys were never asking questions about, are we walking, like, down an incline? Are we walking up an incline? Uh, 
Yeah, okay. I have no clue. I, I mean, if we think we could test that spot, you want to try messing with the crowbar and see if we can bang it on through there or something? Yeah, I'm, I'm on board with that. Yeah, just want to check. That wall? So, you can move back through that area, busting out the crowbar. Uh, let me just get a strength check from you with advantage. Chris, I'm handing it over to you to do this, so. All right. Yeah. I think sure. both of you are equally as weak. We are definitely weak sauce, but Jinx is not necessarily. I mean, it's bad enough I got to cut tails off rats down here. Uh, I'm not going to be like crowbar and walls. Manual labor is not my thing. Yeah, let's lay it. Strength with advantage? Uh, yeah, and it actually it can be athletics as well. Oh, Actually, great. no, it should just be a strength check. My bad. Uh, it should just be a strength check. Yeah, well, okay, but still. Uh, still with advantage, though. Correct. Look at that. Uh, 15. Wait, is that a 15 total? Or... Yeah, 15 total. Oh, okay, okay. You rolled. <laughs> A 15. Wait, and a 1? I don't know. No, wait. Oh, then, oh okay. You can that have should actually be a. Yeah, that should actually be a 14 then. I forgot the negative. Negative 1. So, gotcha. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's sufficient to say um, that you start to break away some of like the lime and like this like pretty weak cement effectively at this point. Um, but you can start to kind of break it away, getting some larger stones to kind of come away from it. Uh, let me have the two of you roll d6s. Uh, three. Four. Chris, how did you get to that when you rolled two dice to only show, like, the higher one? Oh, um, when you pick a dice... Like in the dice roller, if you scroll down a bit, you can actually choose like disadvantage or advantage, like this or add. Oh my gosh, I never scrolled down, so that like little bit is just cut off. That's awesome. Hell yeah. Yeah, I hadn't seen that before. I saw it now, so. Nice. Cheers. Oh, I accidentally deleted mine, but it was four. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, so you guys can kind of like break away this hole uh, where it's large enough that you can start to crawl through uh, and make it to the other side. Well, that worked surprisingly well. I'm glad you spotted that spot there. Yeah, me too. Uh, here, I'll hand back the probe bar. Not sure why I even have this thing. Uh, probably should have got rid of it a long time ago. May or may not have been used in the act. I mean, it certainly came in handy here. So. And I'm not sure of the current law, like uh, investigations, abilities, or anything like that. But uh, be aware that your fingerprints may be on uh, an important tool. I like so okay. wiping it off. You guys can see around you. Uh, there's like three different directions that you can go to the east, south, or southwest, or southeast, southwest, or south. Well, uh, unless you got a feeling a certain way, we could just uh, flip a coin on it, so to speak, uh, and I'll like pull out one of my uh, gaming dice. Remember, I think we went east last time. So do we want to continue that, or do we want to go another way? Oh, by all means, if you remember, we would go with your intuition over mine. It hasn't gotten me too far. Well, I mean, I'm here. Well, I mean, I'd not be 100% sure that we went east, but I think we did. Feels right, at least. I mean, we're not really going anywhere in particular, so we can't really get lost. 
Okay. So you guys can kind of move forward as you kind of like move around some of these corners. You can spot like a pretty familiar probably area here. This is roughly where you guys encountered a few of the uh, like rat folk like in a kind of like nest uh, point. And you can see some of those skeletons are like left here. Um, what is it? I think it's been about three or four weeks. So I'd say, yeah, probably like some like remnants of bones um, are still here. I recognize that handiwork anywhere. <laughs> but then I think I clicked your guy and you clicked mine. Yeah, I love that, that we can actually move each other's tokens. So crossing through the next area here, you guys can start to spot that little underground lake that you had spotted before. Now it's certainly starting to remember now. We are definitely on the right track. Now, I can't quite remember. We've been down in so many random like tunnels and pits and sewers. Uh, that's a different lake than the undead creature came out of, right? Yeah, the undead creatures came out from the lake beneath our goblin house. Yeah, I thought so. You'll notice that I'm like now like intentionally putting you in between me and the water as we like walk close to it. Great. Like it would be obvious to anyone that knows Jinx. He's like trying to pretend like that's not what he's doing, but he's definitely doing it. So as you guys like start to move closer to this bit of water, stop moving. When I'm talking, stop moving. Um, as you guys start to move closer to this bit of water, uh, you're going to hear kind of like a little bit of like almost like a clicking and then like some stones kind of like rustled and start to fall. And I need you guys to roll initiative. Uh, six total for me. Yeah, 14 for Malshan. And I put him in. The initiative order. All right. So as you hear the stones kind of like rustle uh, from just a little bit to the southeast of you, um, you kind of hear like the clicking noise. And uh, one of these creatures is going to leap out, charging forward into you guys. Gonna go for Malchin, and I think actually I'm gonna have him make an attack on each of you guys. Um, so the first of the attacks will be against Malchin. Why can't I add dice? All right, so the first D4 is part of his attack. Um, it's his proficiency die. Uh, second D4 is only against Malchin. Um, but this first attack my die roller is still broken. It's not actually showing it. Can you guys see my dice roll there? Yeah, I see it, but it seems like I'm stuck. One of the D4s just like vibrating. <laughs> Doesn't get up. Uh... Yeah. Oh wait, I can see yours. It's a 7, a 1, a 14 on the D20, and then the one die is cocked, the uh, D4, the, the other D4. The one that was the proficiency? Yeah, the 1 is the 1 D4, the other D4 is cocked. Oh, wait a second, though. Is yours actually giving you an answer to it, like it's showing you the numbers, or are you guys talking about you can physically see the dice? Oh, yeah, physically. I'm talking about physically. I think it's not. Gotcha. Totally yeah, if it doesn't time. finish it off, though, it doesn't actually tell me what the die is. And that's part of what my die roller feels like it's been doing. Um, but that's one of the things is it breaks it to roll two of the same dice when, like, the computer would normally tell me which is D1 and which is the second one. Oh, yeah, it is sort of vibrating. I see that, Melton. Oh, there. Looks like it, it just decided there. Yeah. Uh, but that still tells me if it's going to take that long to roll dice, I'm not going to be able to use the die roller. Um, so I think that's going to hit with a 
15 plus um where's his normal attack plus six so he's got a plus four to that so 20 to hit you should hit um and he's going to deal 7 11 15 damage to you as he stabs into you holy hell I mean, I think I just pretty much maxed out his damage. Okay, yeah, because I'm down to blooded. <laughs> uh, and then his second attack, I'm going to see if it'll roll the second D4. Might as well just clear it and see. I don't went through without a problem. Um, big ol' miss as he, like, basically goes to, like, stab through Malchin and kind of, like, pierces through your shoulder, like, right beneath your armor uh, when he goes to, like, pull the blade out and go for the second lunge towards Jinx. Uh, he, like, doesn't fully get the blade out of your body, and it, like, sticks under the armor and just, like, draws up and through, like, the leather of your armor, like, how it attaches to your body. Um, and he's just going to miss completely with that second attack. Uh, it will then go to you, Malchin. Yeah, I'm going to try to retaliate with... Swing it. Let's see. Could be a solid hit for... What is that? Like, five damage? Yeah. Five force damage from the scimitar. Yeah, and I'm going to, like, Try to attack him with my short sword as well. Gotcha. And uh, then let's see, that's uh, 7 plus 4. That should be. What's it? 11 to hit? Uh, 11 is going to miss. You'll see that this guy uh, is a little bit more well armored, uh, as well as like carries a small little buckler. Can I guess it? Hoping, but yeah, that's it from Malshin there. Or no, actually, I'm just gonna like move around him. Yeah, I could do that before. Yeah. Uh, from the kind of like back, um, behind you guys, um, Jinx. Well, both of you will kind of recognize as um another figure kind of pops out from behind one of the walls. Hand crossbow extended out, and it's going to take a shot full. Uh, for Jinx here, I will have advantage from pack tactics. Um, which will give it sneak attack on its attack if it hits. Is it pack tactics only in uh, melee? Uh, it gains advantage from the guy who you're fighting. Oh, I got you. And then the last of all the D6 only counts if you fail a con save if it hits. So. Oh, did it add? Okay, so the first D20s are the ones that matter. It's the 15. The second set is because I told it to with advantage. It automatically adds the extra die with advantage. I did not recognize that. Um, so 17 to hit Jinx. Well, actually, it's a 17. Um, it's a 21. So that should definitely hit you. Um, and this might actually down Jinx right here. Uh, I'm actually going to do my reaction and cast Silvery Barbs on him. Silvery Barbs is the he rolls another die and takes the lowest, right? Yeah, that sounds right. Yep. Roll another d20 and then pick the lowest result. Alright, I'm gonna write down all the damage first so I know what it's doing and don't have to roll that all over. Again. Oh wait, it's 60 foot range. Are, um, are these 5 foot square? He's easily within, yeah. 
All right, so we're rolling another d20. Yeah, so I'll pick the higher roll that you had and re-roll that one. So you'll still have your other roll, though, I think, to choose from, right? I don't know. No, no, no. Know. He takes the 15 out of his 3 and a 15. And then he rolled a 15. Silvery Barbs makes him roll another d20 and choose the lower of the 15 or the now 18. Um, so it'll still hit. So I need a con save from you. Okay, I'm going to use the second half of it to give the advantage uh, to Malchin. Gotcha. And that 17 was your con save? Yeah, so 18 total for the con. Gotcha. So you're good. You won't take the poison damage here. Um, but you are going to take 14, 18 damage from the hand crossbow. Jinx, like, got this crossbow bolt, like, sticking out of his chest. He'll look down at it, hanging on literally by one hit point, and he'll just say, pathetic. <laughs> I have 19 hit points. Uh, Malchin, are you bloodied as well, or are you just um, mortally wounded? Are you, how injured are you? Oh, I am blooded. I am at the 10 hit points left. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so each of you are basically equally as like severely wounded right here. Um, and it's going to go to you here, Jinx. Oh, shit. I never wrote down your short sword attack on the swashbuckler. Did you do 7 plus 4? Or did you do, like, three plus four for seven? I remember a seven. Oh, I did a seven plus four. So, like, an 11 total. Eight. Gotcha. So, the guy in front of you, Jinx, is severely wounded uh, from... Uh, Malchin's attacks, or you've got the guy with the crossbow downrange who already shot you uh, and is like currently reloading his crossbow. Uh, I I don't think like didn't do eleven damage. If that's, I think it was like eleven to hit him. Little. Oh oh oh. Okay, my bad. Yeah, that's why I didn't write down damage from it. Never mind. He is not severely wounded. All right, so it's on me. It is indeed. But he's that guy's not hit at all. So wait, you hurt somebody though, didn't you? Yeah, it did hurt the, like the swashbuckler rat, but I rolled like minimal damage for me. Okay, I got you. He's just not like bloodied right now. What are you gonna do? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm. We're both pretty hurt. We're not gonna be able to out heal the damage from these guys. So I have to try to do something offensive. And then, I guess what I'm gonna do is, um, I will. Uh, I'm gonna cast hold person. Is the guy in front of us is like clearly a humanoid? Like I, I guess it's my first time casting the spell. So I'm gonna assume it will work on this guy. We're about to find out. So I'm going to do hold person on the rat creature in front of us. Gotcha. The one right between the two of you? Yeah, yeah, that one. And uh, it's wisdom 14. As he's going to, like, uh, make one more attack, like, towards your chest, um, kind of recovering from pulling, like, this, his blade out from Mountain's armor, he stops. Uh, so as I like cast the spell, I'm just gonna say, uh, "Hold your horses there! I do declare, freeze!" and uh, like make it clear to Malchin that he's like paralyzed right now. And then uh, I'm gonna like bolt, I guess, or like around that corner there. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Uh, from there, it should go to you, Malchin. What would you like to do? Well, I'm going to try to attack the, this paralyzed rat person. Uh, 
Uh, do we get anything from him being like, is like Paralyzed, do I get advantage or is it just a regular roll? Yep, you will have advantage on him. Um, are you going to go both attacks? Uh, yeah, I am. Just move one. it over top of you and then select and like draw a square around you. I'm so embarrassed that you. Oh got my bad. Just select with the R below it, like right below the hand. You press S, it'll let you do a group select. There you go. Uh, let's see. That's a 16 to hit. No, wait. Uh, 17 to hit. Uh, with your advantage. Yeah, with advantage. I rolled a nat one and a twelve. Uh, yeah, that's going to miss. Can I give him uh, my inspiration on that one? He already had advantage. Oh, so it wouldn't help? Okay. Oh, right, and I had, like, the silvery barbs advantage as well, right? Yeah, but it's already advantage because he's paralyzed. Oh, well, that's the first one then. Uh, off to a great start. Uh, second attack. Even worse. <laughs> Let's see. I think it's basically for the same. That's 12 for 16 total. Yeah, it's still going to miss him. And with that, I am following Jinx. Running away from. These rats, let's see. I'm basically get like up to Jinx here. I'm like up against the wall, like puking blood, hanging on by a thread. <laughs> like they can't all be winners, brother. Do I get an extra chance at the end of its turn? Yeah. Yeah, every time at the end of its turn you get to take the same uh fourteen wisdom. My bad. So even the second attack there wouldn't have been um, at advantage because it would have used the silvery barbs for the first one because um, that was not paralyzed any longer. It will break free. Oh, okay. Oh, then it gets the opportunity to attack as I move away, I guess. Um, you can make that decision now. I'm not going to hold that against you. Um, if you want to, you can either um, hold that position, or you can run away and risk the opportunity. Actually, you know what? Yeah. Um, it has a reaction uh, that it can attack somebody if they miss. So it's going to use its reaction anyways, um, which will free you to be able to run from it. Okay, the, yeah, then let's just see if I survive the attack. <laughs> well, its reaction is a disadvantage, so this gives you that. But I still think there's no reason that it wouldn't try to attack you um, as you fail. Do, 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 do. D8 for damage. And then offensive stance is the... So first D4 is, again, uh, it's um, proficiency die. That feels like way too many. It rolled advantage on all of the dice. Yeah, I think when it rolls, right. yeah. All right. So the roll to hit is what matters. That was what really was disadvantage, was the seven. And then the first D4, I can't tell which went first, the one or the three. It looks like the one. Yeah, no, we can't really tell now with disadvantage. Yeah, it doesn't. Well. Um, I'm just going to say, does it matter? So a 7 plus 3 is 10, plus 4 is 14. I think your AC is 15. Um, actually, since I leveled up and I'm dual wielding, I am up at 17. Even better. So it doesn't even matter if it had that 3, it was still a miss with the 7. 
Um, so it's going to miss as it reposts you. Basically, with your second attack, it's going to deflect your attack away and try to uh, stab into you with the, your with its rapier. Um, when it misses, you can then break away from that combat, um, and then it's going to go to the assassin. Um, it's going to rush up behind, uh, take a shot at you, Malchin, uh, in half cover. And have a plus three AC, so we'll need a 20 to hit you. Uh, it will have E20, proficiency die, and then a D6 damage, no sneak attack, and a D6 if you fail the poison. So second D6 only counts if you fail a con save after it hits. Don't think it's going to hit you there. With a 11, 15. Um, so there's just going to be a bolt that kind of flies by you over your shoulder as you kind of duck around that corner there. Uh, and it's going to go to Jinx. You know, hold person was effective, but it didn't last long. Um, you guys are otherwise still just kind of being chased by these creatures. Uh, I'll uh, look over at Malchin, and I'm just going to say, God damn it, I hate rats, and I don't know what we're doing down here, and I'm going to cast Bane on the uh, two of them. Uh, so it's Charisma 14. Oh, oh, they save on Bane beforehand, too? Go. Oh, I don't know. It just says Charisma 14. Uh, up to three creatures of your choice that you can see within range must make Charisma saving throws. Whether the target yeah, fails a saving throw or makes an attack. Yeah, so if they fail, they're affected. If not, they're not. Oddly, these things are charismatic. Uh, and then I'm going to use my bonus action. Uh, and I'm going to tap Malchin on the shoulder. And I'll just say, uh, remember, we're not... <laughs> Remember, we're not trapped down here with them. They're trapped down here with us. And I'm going to give you bardic inspiration. And as I finish saying that, you'll notice that my voice is getting further and further away. I think you are immediately left of him. But what? Five and... Yeah, well, I had to use five to move out to be able to see them both, I think. Right? Gotcha. That makes sense. And 15. Because I wouldn't be able to see him from there. That square might be your best bet. Uh, after Jinx, it will go to Malchin. Oh, we're skipping the rat? No, nope, the rats go after. Oh wait, oh wait, my bad. It is um the swashbuckler. My bad. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's going to run up at Malchin, uh, and he's going to basically call out, uh, for the rat god. And is going to try to stab into you twice. Um, so, going to go for his attack. His damage is a d8. d4 for proficiency. And then a d4 for his offensive stance. First attack into you. Uh, it's going to be a 13, 17 to hit um, is your AC. Yeah. My, minus four, though, from Bane. Oh, minus the D4 from Bane. Oh, but you rolled the four? I All right, yeah, so six. 13 is going to be a miss. Um, I'm going to re-roll this. The... Oh, wait, it's just the first hit. Once per turn. It's attack roll. Oh, the offensive stance isn't damage. That's to the attack. Matching grab 
four more hit points because I think I hit you with the offensive stance. I don't remember how much damage I did to you with it, but I think I did damage when it's plus to the actual attack. Um, so this one, the second D4, just ignore that. Um, and you can do another Bane roll, Justin. So this one has a 14, 18, goes down to a 17. So this one will hit, and it's going to do the 9 piercing damage as it stabs into you. Yeah, well, then I'm back to bloodied again. <laughs> Are you below 10 hit points now, though? Yep. You too are now mortally wounded. Um, and that's going to take it to Mountain. All right, mortally wounded. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try to hit back at the rat before I run. <laughs> before Mountain like, attacks, can I um, just like give him my inspiration? You can indeed. You can give him advantage here. All right, so I'm just going to yell out The Rat King is trash. Kill those losers. Yeah, I'm going to use my bonus action to do an ensnaring strike as well. So that's basically going to be a, a strength save of 12 if I hit. Or he will take... Is it? Yeah, it's 1d6 at the start of each, its turn. Okay, yeah. And I have advantage there now, so let's see. Uh, that's uh, oh, that's a good one. That's uh, 22 to hit for 7 okay. damage. And it will have to make that DC 12 save for strength. Is going to resist them. Um, so is there no effect at that point? or? Oh wait, that's minus 3. I don't know if that makes a difference. Um, he's got a 13 with a total of minus 4 to that. What did you say? DC 12? Yeah, DC 12. Yeah, still no effect. Yeah, because it's... uh. Yeah, if the target succeeds, it shrivels away. Yeah, um, but you said you did a total of 7 damage there? Oh, I forgot. He was actually hurt before, right? He was indeed. So you've got, what, a D8? Yeah, a D8. Let's see. An extra one on damage. All righty. So you've got him severely wounded. Uh, as you strike out at him, the vines kind of shrivel away. And it's going to go to the little guy. Um, he's gonna rush out and he's like, The rat guy is killed! And he's gonna shoot at you with his little uh, crossbow at uh, Jinx here. You love to hate these guys. Um, second D6 is only if you fail the con save. Um, so, yeah, there's no way he's gonna hit with that. You could negate his entire attack with your Bane. He goes negative uh, and hits himself. <laughs> so, yeah, he just kind of like runs up, and you can tell that like talking shit about the rat god has like really infuriated this little guy. Um, and he can't like handle that you could even like say this and get away with it, that like nothing's happening to you right now. Um, and it's gonna go to Jinx. Uh, okay, so I've got a touch for that. Okay, Cure Wounds is an action, but Healing Word's a bonus action. The only thing that will hurt my uh, concentration, like, spell-wise, is if I try to cast another concentration spell, right? Correct. All right, so I'm going to run forward, and uh, halfway through, I guess I'm just going to, like, try to get to where I can get the closest shot at that dude down there. At the one Mountain's fighting? 
Oh, wait, never mind. It doesn't matter. Okay, yeah. All right, so, yeah, I'm just going to run up uh, on this dude right in front of me as he's, like, yelling about the Rat King and, uh, like, run up to him. And as I get to that guy, I'm going to cast Vicious Mockery on the other guy. So I'm going to yell, your king has abandoned you. And it's Wisdom 14. So he will fail. Uh, roll your d4. The mighty two damage. Uh, and uh, bonus action. And for my bonus action, I'm going to cast Healing Word on Malchin for seven. Well, then I'm back up to Blooded. All righty. Uh, let's see. Uh, little rat guy is going to uh, call out um, one last time for the rat god, uh, and he is going to stab out at Mauchin for um, d20 attack. He has disadvantage. Uh, I'm just going to do disadvantage. I'm not going to use theirs. Does all the dice, and I want to roll all the dice. Um, and then his attack damage is a d8 if he hits. And offensive stance is essentially he's got a second um, a proficiency die. So, bam. Double 17, so disadvantage does nothing from the vicious mockery. Um, and then you can roll the d4, but he's got 17, 20, 24. I think he's going to hit Malchin regardless. Um, and it's going to do seven piercing damage. Does he take you down with that? I don't believe so. Nope, I'm um, back to mortally wounded. Thank he God for that healing word. Is trying to bug out here. He is going to do a grapple shove to try to push you back. Um, you can do a contested athletics or acrobatics here. I think I'll do acrobatics. And Jinx, I think you can still roll a d4 for Bane. Um, I've got a 20. Six. And I got a 24. Only <laughs> oh, minus one. Damn. So he is going to push you back. And then one. It's just five feet. Um, and kind of bug out to there. And it's going to go to Malchin. That's sad. That was a natural 20 as well. Oh, I'm going to try to, if that one's bugging out, he's going up towards the rat uh, at Jinx. Wait, you don't have acrobatics proficiency? Or athletics? Well, I guess athletics is, might be a minus if you had it. I, mean, I have prophetics, uh, proficiency in athletics for some reason, but it still is, like, because of the strength score. <laughs> And the acrobatics is still better. <laughs> Why'd you take it in athletics? Is there a particular reason why you wanted it in athletics, despite not being good at athletics? I think it's because the th it's from the skills I can pick as a ranger. Uh, and there's it not seems like crazy to me that you would have access to athletics but not acrobatics. But yeah. That's the way it was. Because I remember not being able to take acrobatics. But I don't mind. It means... a bitch. I just closed my fucking window. Uh, but my bad. It's on you there, Mouch, and you can figure out what you're doing while I reload and get back in the game. Yeah, I'm just 
like trying to pincer attack this guy and roll for a damage. Gotcha. Uh, you'll have flanking plus two with that as well. <laughs> for a natural one. <laughs> Damn. Bonus action? That will be for a 16 plus... Yeah, that's a 20 to hit. And then 22. Extra two. Solid hit on him for sure. And damage. That will do four and. Yeah, eight damage. Oh, and because I remember to do it this time, I'm going to put Favored Foe on this one as well. So it's another 1d4 for three damage. So 11 total damage. Um. Yeah, it's going to uncanny dodge that. And it'll take. Oh, and do I gain inspiration from the Nat one? On the first. You attack? do indeed. Oh. Um, and then it's going to. I think. I guess I have to. It's going to. Draw its dagger with its offhand and try to stab out at Jinx here. So first D4 is proficiency, second D4 is the actual dagger's damage. And I think that's all it's got on this attack. Um and then minus a D4 from you, Jinx. I've got a 18 right now to hit you. I don't know if a D4 can even matter. 16 hits or does not. Uh yeah, I've only got 14. I gotta do uh silvery barbs on this one. Gotcha. Um, uh, I'm gonna... roll... All right, I got max damage from it. Um, we'll just kind of remember that. It's eight damage if I can hit with the silvery barbs. Uh, three. That's definitely going to make it miss. Um, who's getting advantage from this? You're up next, so consider that like as a potential as well. All right, so as I, like, Silvery Barbs him, or as he, like, attacks out at me, I'm going to say, uh, not only has the Rat God abandoned you, so has he, uh, and I'll give myself advantage. Yeah. Um, so he is then going to pull a little uh, vial from his belt with his, like, dagger hand, and slam it down into the ground, and he's like, the rat god hates your eyes! And everybody's going to be covered in darkness. Uh, and he, too, is going to run away. Yeah, I'm guessing dark vision doesn't do anything for that. Uh... A thick gray smoke. It doesn't actually say. I feel like this obscures vision. I don't think light counts the same way. Um, I don't want to take the time to look, but I'm almost positive that this is obscured. Oh, yeah. yeah I, I mean, can see it there. Feels like Darkness. it's a smoke, all right? Dense. Yeah, I think this is going to count as uh, heavily obscured. So yeah, I would say that blocks vision. And it's basically kind of like roughly in that uh, oval area, that kind of circle. Uh, and then it's going to go to Jinx. Uh, okay, so he basically just like threw like smoke bomb on the ground. I mean, you might for a second think that the rat god has cursed you and you're blinded forever. But yeah, you could probably smell with your nose that it's a smoke bomb. I like the idea that it's a smoke <laughs> Well, I like see him smash a vial, so I'm guessing that's what he did. So I'm going to do it. Uh, is like in um, movement messed with, or how does that work? 
it's more or less the type of thing where you don't know where you are unless you know where you are. So you could probably run um, to chase after him without any problem here. You heard beat pitter-patter down to the south. All right, I'm going to come down to, like, uh, right here. Uh, that's okay. I can see out of there now. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, throw my boomerang, I think. Uh, actually, technically, the one you're in would still be obscured. My bad. I think one more, to be clear of it. Because I think he was directly north of you, Malchin. Or was he... Do you remember which one he was in? No, yeah, you have it right, because that's where I was, I think, where he just drew the circle. Um. So, yeah, I'm going to run down there. I'm going to... 6120 on the boomerang. Yeah, they're, I think both of them are still within... I think you're about 30 feet from the far one. All right, so yeah, I'm just going to uh, walk out there. I'm going to pull out my golden-tipped boomerang. I'm going to kiss the tip of it, and I'm going to say, "At to speak Australian, bounty hunter. And I'm going to throw it at the uh, assassin rat. All right, so it's a total of... Uh, oh, okay, 19. That's respectable. 19 for the golden boomerang. Solid hit. For a massive seven damage. That's literally max damage possible out of this character, so that's impressive. Uh, any bonus actions? Yeah, I'm going to do bonus action. Um, vicious. No, I can't. Uh, I'm going to give uh, Malchin Bardic Inspiration, and I'm going to say, now's your chance, brother. Finish him. Uh, so after you, it is going to go to the swashbuckler. Where were you guys when you got this encounter? You were, like, right where the assassin is, right? Yeah, basically. So the Drift Globe is there. Uh, you're just going to hear kind of like running off into the distance and like echoing through the stone. Um, and God will punish you all. Uh, and then it's going to go to Malchin. Yeah, he's going to follow out of the smoke cloud. Try to attack the assassin rat as he sees it. Oh, wait. No, I attacked the other one. Is that what you're saying? You did. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, let's see. The first D4 is the proficiency die, and the second is for uh, my... Wait, wait. Let's hold see. up. Which one did you think you attacked, Justin? Because you said assassin, which is the one that's still on the board. No, no. I want... Uh, I thought the assassin was the first one we fought with and then the other one was like the bow guy no, no so you wanted the far one yeah yeah the one that was trying to run away yeah my bad i i said the wrong name i was 100 percent going after the other one i thought you called the first one the assassin not the ranged one uh that one is not mortally wounded but that's the only difference here mountain what do you go yeah i mean i'm still going for this uh assassin right that's i come out with the cloud, seeing it. So, first D4 is going to be my efficiency die, and the second is for the favored foe. Uh, that is, uh, let's see, 4, 18, 22 to hit. 18 is a solid hit. Solid hit. Yeah, but that's for, let's see, 3, <laughs> 6, 10 damage. Oh, wait, let's see. No, I can't that wrong. 3, 9, 11 damage. Yeah. Just enough to get the kill uh, as you kind of come up from behind and stab into him. This guy's just going to, like, kind of, like, trip over himself as, like, life leaves his body. His finger pulls the trigger, like, a releasing one more crossbow bolt uh, as if he was ready to spin on you and fire once more. Uh, and that's going to take us to Jinx. 
Or do you have any other movement or anything from Mountain? No, I think I'll stay here. Yeah, that's my bad. You definitely did call the first guy the swashbuckler and the second guy the assassin. I just got him confused up. What are you doing here, Jigs? Oh, it's my turn? My bad. So the globe is just like laying on the floor, basically. All right, I guess still hovering in the air. Um, so can I like just grab it out of the air, like uh, using my free um, interaction? I don't see why not. Okay, so my bad. All right, so I'm supposed to be right here. That's where you have me at, right? Yeah, you should have moved in front of the smoke last time. Uh, could we see from the distance where it looked like he went? Does it was it like pretty obvious he just kept going straight there, or did he turn off? Uh, I think you would have seen that he was basically heading off to the east there. All right. Well, I guess I will just go uh, a little bit further or maybe i'll hmm. when you round the corner enough you'll see that he's just around this edge and it's like pulling out bandages and like wrapping itself um so you're like coming around that corner and you guys are face to face uh okay so i'll have just five movement to use basically but i'll have already used my action uh for dash uh, and I'll just yell out and let Malchin know. Uh, he's right here, Malchin. He's trying to get away. Um, and I guess I'm going to go five more feet. There's, I don't see any reason not to, right? I think I probably wouldn't have expected him to be there. So I would have been like already like full momentum run. And then I like come around the corner and I'm just like shocked to yell out for Malchin. And then that's, I think that's all I have. Uh, I could do Bardic Inspiration. I think he's already inspired. Did you use that bardic inspiration before, Mountain? No, I forgot to use it because I got an action or something. Okay, Wait, I'll give it to myself then. Do you have the ability yet? I think there's a certain point where you gain the ability to inspire yourself. And that's specifically the college of the the ones that gain the extra. Oh no, I can't do that. I can't give it to myself. It has to be somebody else. Yeah, I think you get that at level four or level six. Um yeah, so when you round that corner, you see it like kind of like wrapping itself with bandages. Um and it's going to kind of like Dropping the bandages, uh, drawing its sword again. Uh, it's going to try to attack you twice here. Um, still baned. So the first one is proficiency. Second one is its offensive stance. And then D8 for damage. Um, I've got... What is that? He is 15, 19 to hit you, minus your Bane. If you roll a 4, is a 15 still a hit? I think so. Yeah, it would be. Um, but uh, I'm going to do it anyway. Um, and it's going to do 9 piercing damage. Well, hold up one sec, because I have uh, the reactions I can do. Oh, okay, okay. You can use your um, vicious, not vicious mockery, but um, your inspiration to reduce its attack. Yeah, sorry. I was trying to get the freaking D4 up. Okay, so I got four with that. So then I'm going to do cutting words, uh, which so will be. 15 minus. Yeah, so it's a D6. It's Bardic Inspiration roll. 11. Should be a miss. Uh, and then the second attack into you. Uh, should be a hit with a 22-25 minus Bane. Um, and I don't think you can cutting words a second time. No, it's my reaction. Uh, so this time it's only going to do 5 damage. A lot less damage, but I think you don't have enough hit points. I do not. I have one hit point. So, 
notch it and you basically hear or you watch as um damn it jinx runs around the corner i'm pretty sure he said something as he like bumped into this thing and you basically just hear like this gurgling sound and you might see like the blade of the rapier kind of like poke through but you basically hear is like the footsteps go silent and you hear this blood chilling sound of like the gurgle as um uh he is like pierced through the throat and falls unconscious what you're sure the it's the scream of a woman but it could have been jinx you're not sure about that there's definitely a damsel in distress, and she needs a saving. She's only oh. got one way to pay for your services. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm moving my way down. For hearing that. I think that's all I can get without dashing, but... Seeing you say I ain't gonna... Healing word. Oh, wait, no, not healing word. Cure wounds, I mean. Yeah, so that's a 1d8. Uh, do you have healing word? Uh, no, I said it wrong. I have cure wounds. So I'm going to use that. Gotcha. I just wanted to make sure because healing word was the bonus action. Um, so this is one of those situations here. Uh, you could heal him or you could try to kill this thing. It's mortally wounded. You're mortally wounded. Jinx is unconscious on the ground. Yeah, I see it from here, but I can't get to it, though. And attack it. Okay, okay, I got you. I uh, forgot about that, too. I mean, I could try to, like, throw the short sword at him. You <laughs> don't have a bow, too? Oh, I do. Yeah, right. Uh, but... Yeah, I'm just going to drop my uh, swords and pull out the longbow. So let's see if I can hit this. Gotcha. As far as things go, um, you can stow those swords and draw your bow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Doing that. So let's see. Uh, the first 1d8 will be for my bow attack, and the second will be for the Yarn Slayer. All you need is a hit here. Yeah, yeah. solid. You got a nat 18. 18 is its AC. This thing has one hit point left. Yeah, and I would have done Sorry. like 12. Just like running forward with your bow, uh, vaguely ready, unreally known what you're about to see. The moment you round the corner in a very similar situation uh, as Jinx, you are again face to face with this creature as it's like running Jinx through. And the moment you like release your arrow, like in a little bit of a shock, right through this thing's skull, it goes limp. Um, I basically need a death saving throw from Jinx here, but I don't really think it matters because you've got a spell slot and you can heal him next turn. So yeah, I think it basically comes back around to Malchin, um, and you can get him up with cure wounds. Yeah, and he'll get a total of five hit points. Uh, no wisdom modifier on that? That is with the wisdom. Oh, that was with it. Or all the three. Well, if that's not living up to my name, I don't know what is. Oh, that would have been your um, death save? <laughs> Natural one. <laughs> Gives you inspiration, though. I do believe I'll be inspired in the afterlife. Well, no, he healed you right afterwards, so. No, I know. I'm just kidding. Uh, how much was uh, that deal for? Five total. Uh, yeah. So as you guys uh, take care of these two rats who were laying in ambush, uh, I think this is a good time for us to take a break. Oops, I did not mean the rat. That was like the most shit show combat ever. Like the pure chaos of that was hilarious. All right, I'll be back in like five or so. Yep, same here. All right, I'm back in good whenever. Hey, when it says um, on cutting words, like the wording is strange. Can you just help me to clarify this? It says uh, 
subtract the number from the roll. You can do so after the roll, but before knowing the result. So does that mean after the die is rolled, the D20, but I don't get to know like all the modifiers and stuff? Uh, it's a lot like with a um, battle master where once I know you've got that ability, I need to be a lot slower in telling you what the results are. Okay, I got you. I got you. But but I as long as I know what it is too, I'll let you know ahead of time if I'm thinking about using it. So it's not like surprise. So yeah, yeah, okay. So it's I get to know the dice roll, but I don't get to know all the other pluses or anything. Yeah, when you're even thinking about it, it'll definitely be beneficial to say, like, I might be cutting words this. I will for sure. I'll let you know in the future because honestly I had forgotten about it and I was getting ready to do the spell slot one. And then I realized after you said I couldn't use Bardic Inspiration on myself that at level three, I got cutting words. So, yeah, I'll warn you ahead of time. Like, obviously, if it's like a crucial situation, there's a really good chance. Like, basically, if I'm being attacked at one hit point, just assume I'll do anything to stay alive. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't think it would have made a difference either way, which one I used there, because either way, um, I use my reaction. So the resources spent. Yeah, hello, I'm um, back. What up? Yeah, that was like full-on chaotic combat right there. I mean, anytime we literally get started and immediately, like, before I do anything, we take a turn, I'm at one hit point. <laughs> like, I know it's about to get crazy. I feel like that's... Uh, pack tactics and the assassin are pretty hardcore. It was so hard to resist healing, though, because you think, like, oh, the first thing I got to do is heal myself. But in all actuality, I think that would have been the worst decision I could make. I mean, one hit from those guys basically does most of your life from each of you. So there's no reason to be. The only reason you would heal yourself is to try to avoid an instant death. Yeah, that's literally what I was thinking. That would be like the only way it would really matter. And I mean, probably that would have been the smart thing to do. But I think I had to try to like control the situation some. And when uh, I, I thought about doing hold person again, but it wasn't that effective. And, uh, you know, Bane is just a lot more consistent, I think. And they had like multiple attacks each and they were taking saving throws left and right. I didn't actually check. Do they get to save at the end of each turn with Bane? Uh, I, no, I don't think so. No, I think they have to make you drop concentration. Yeah, which is like pretty easy. And if I'm at one hit point anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm going to drop it. Concentration is out. not pretty easy. Well, if you're at one hit point, it is. Knocking you out is, but the difference of old person got you because it got to make a save on the end of its turn. Otherwise, well, yeah, but... old person is incredibly effective. But like me personally, I thought it was a bad choice to go after the person you had held versus going for the other one and trying to knock it out. But I have a lot more information. But the reason I had to do that is, is I had to hold person him so I could use my reaction to move, or I could move away without getting uh, reactioned. No, no, that's what I mean. Like, I think you guys played that perfectly well. When I was thinking about it, I thought Mouchin was making the bad decision on attacking the guy who was held but realistically, he wasn't even held because I forgot he gets the save at the end of his turn and he was no longer even paralyzed at that point. Yeah, right. It's so weird because like everything happens in the same six seconds. So it's kind of like it like fizzles, but like it takes enough time that he misses his turn. Gave you enough. Yeah, gave you enough that you're able to run away from him safely. His turn goes by without being able to do anything. But then he's coming to, like, essentially during Mauchin's turn, is able to react to Mauchin missing with an attack, which frees up Mauchin to move over, move away um, at the end of his attacks. But yeah, it's just one of those things, like, there's never a good choice. You always just have to try to figure out what the best ways are. Um, but I was definitely thinking after that first turn, I mean, after that first attack, I'm like, shit. Have I just killed these guys by throwing this challenge at them? You're like, these guys are fucked. TPK time. Make sure you're recording. <laughs> yeah, that was perfect, though. I thought Malchin played it well. Imagine if, like, the whole person would have stuck for one more turn. Imagine if Malchin would have actually, like, hit him right there. 
he would have probably like tuned him up pretty good. It could have went a lot of different ways, honestly. Imagine if I just That's took one more point of damage and just got downed right off the bat. I mean, all around you guys were quite often everybody was one hit away from death. Um, you guys, like the assassin only had 16 hit points. He was a solid hit from Malchin for like a single kill. But effectively, once he had that six damage on him, he was basically just waiting to be pretty easily single attack killed. Um, you had the swashbuckler at pretty risky hit points most of that battle. There was just a lot of those times where the swashbuckler is stupid hard to hit. He is four plus four on his dexterity stat, and he carries a shield um, with studded leather. He's a high AC motherfucker. Um, and he also gets his repost where when you miss him, he gets to attack you back. So there's a lot of craziness going on with all of these guys. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. I felt like we, I mean, I thought we made a pretty freaking good team there. Yeah, okay. We were pretty much on the same page about everything like combat wise too. Like whenever I was like, you know, tactically withdrawing, AKA running away, <laughs> Mountain was doing a good job still like, you know, controlling the battlefield. So as you guys clean up these two uh, rat men and kind of uh, take a moment here, what are your thoughts as you kill the two of them and you're back at this pool once again? So we're going to need to search these bodies. Hopefully this was worth it, because I don't know if two tails is going to pay for that uh, near-death experience. But uh, we could try to rest here for a minute after we do. Oh, all right, I can Look over the assassin rat. See if I can find anything there. What kind of shape are you in? I think basically the same as you. I'll like cough up a bunch of blood and like hunch over. <laughs> yeah, you certainly look how I feel. Well, let's check these rats and then uh, figure out a plan. So yeah, I'll uh, search the one and he can search the other. And um, I'll give him bardic inspiration for his uh, little search there. Thing you still have it. Yeah, I mean, technically, I still do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It lasts for 10 minutes, so that all took place pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, that whole combat, basically, from when you guys rounded that corner to now, was probably about, what, like, four or five rounds of combat? So you're talking about, like, 15, 20 seconds kind of went by there type of thing. Well, that certainly escalated quickly. Was it 24 or 30 seconds, I think, is probably about what that was. Uh, so investigations from the two of you here. With the Bardic Inspiration, I got a six. Nice. So you couldn't even find a tail. Uh, mine is uh, plus one. Uh, just give me the number, though. 19? Oh, sorry, 19 total. Yeah, I want you guys, like, Owlbear Rodeo should be like we're playing pen and paper. You guys should be giving me your totals. Um, so, yeah, we're going for, um, roll a d12 for me, Jinx. Um, Mauchin, you said you had a six total. Um, I think you can basically see... Uh, he's got, like, some random stuff, like his dagger and, like, leather armor. Um, but, like, the hand crossbow and bolts are probably the most valuable things, other than the value in cutting off its tail. Yeah, I'll probably take the hand crossbow. Uh, and cut off the tail, then. So, the biggest thing with taking something like the hand crossbow is just remember, like, to write down that this is something you've looted. It does not have the full value. Um, it is as useful as having a hand crossbow, but like value wise, it's severely diminished. Ah, yes, my profile gives me a reference to a page. Only I don't remember what book I got the monster from. That does not look like the book. Uh, roll a d10. Jinx. Oh, wait, again? Or. Uh, or wait, you have to roll a d12. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. okay. Eight. So, while you are searching through this creature's things, 
Uh, you can find a rapier, a shield, studded leather armor, um, basically the equipment it had been using during that fight. Um, and then you find this like scrunched up piece of paper uh, with like whiskers drawn over this person for Rulis Hob. All right, so I'm like searching this guy, and uh, as I'm like looking him over, I'm not impressed by this. And then I see this little wanted poster, and all of a sudden I like open it up and stand up, and uh, I just look over at Malchin as I'm like looking at this poster. I'm like, you want any of this stuff here? I'm assuming that the values diminish again on that stuff. Yep, same thing. All of those things are far more useful if you want to like use them than they are worth anything to trade. But it doesn't mean that they're worthless to trade. Like studded leather armor, I think, is like 40 or 50 gold. If you go to trade it for 10 gold, that's still 10 gold. Oh, okay. So like crossbow, crossbows are expensive items. I think a hand crossbow is like 25 gold. So you go to trade that for like a quarter of its value, and it's still, you know, like seven or 10 gold. That's the thing. Like something that's 10 gold might be two and a half gold, but it's severely diminished. Oh, yeah, that's still pretty good, though. But like if you trade something that you started with, something that you started with might have a more higher value, like a third or a half. Um, it's just one of those things that the more you use something, the more it's going to be diminished. And most of the time when you kill something that's using something, that's going to be diminished. Take a look at this thing, Malchin. There's like whiskers drawn on him or something. Weird ass rats. No idea. Maybe they wanted to make him a rat. Five thousand gold thrones for his capture or proof of demise. Yeah, these. Uh, including crimes he's done is kind of. Disconcerting, though. Murder of a public official, murder, assault, animating the dead? Come on, don't make a big deal out of it. Who hasn't animated some dead here and there? I can honestly say I never animated any dead. I had a plant, it died, I watered it, it came right back. It's just all about a sliding scale of animating the dead. A dead plant, not a big deal. A dead person, probably more serious. 5,000 thrones, though. That would make us rich and famous. Yeah, you could do a lot with 5,000 thrones. Three ways. That's still pretty damn good. So yeah, I'll, uh, like, you know, put this back, like, fold it up or roll it up or whatever nicely and make sure it's, like, tucked away. Obviously, this is an important thing, a clue slash lead. Um, what do you want to do? You want to just, like, pack up uh, the gear? Um, can we kind of rest while we do that? Do we have to do two separate things? Um, like, if you guys need to take a short rest, it's an hour. It takes a lot more time than, like, gathering up and looting these creatures. Oh, yeah, yeah, I just meant, like, you know, as we're short resting, are we able to do, like, little activities like that, or do we just gotta park it? It's up to you guys. You just have to let me know if you want to short rest. I mean, I definitely need to short rest. And your plan is to short rest here, uh, while you guys are inside of these little caves. What you think, Maljan? Should we look for a better spot, or we might have drawn some attention? All that ruckus. Yeah, we could try moving uh, back a bit. See if we can rest there instead, but... Could at least pop back into the sewers. I mean, there's rats up there, but we hadn't seen any of these things at least, so maybe less of a threat. Yeah, we can do that. So yeah, I think we'll just go like uh, back inside of the uh, sewers. Gotcha, so you're trying to basically step back out into the sewers. Uh, let me just get a roll of d12s from both of you. Nine. Oh, I think I rolled a d20, but yeah, I still got a five, so. Oh no, you rolled a d12. Oh, oh, did you like roll it twice? I'm not sure, but yeah, I got a five. Yeah, oh, that's I a d12 there. 
thought I picked that deed finding for some reason. So you guys can step yourselves like back into the sewers there. Um, are you going to try to rest like in that position, or are you trying to like move somewhere else um, away from where you basically knocked out that wall? No, this is probably pretty good. We don't want to rest at one of the cross areas because there's like four ways to watch as opposed to like only watching two, I think. Yeah, but we could move a bit inwards, uh, like to the west, just so we're not like at the entrance. Yeah, you kind of have three ways while you guys are there because you have that hole knocked in the. Yeah, mountain, like mountain's what I was thinking right there. Exactly like that. Gotcha. Uh, let me have the two of you roll. Let's go for D10s. I got a seven. And ten. Uh, so probably about like 15 or 20 minutes into your rest, uh, the two of you are going to start to hear uh, the chitter of rats uh, coming through the area. Uh, what would you like to do when you first hear that? Of course, I think after the fact, oh, maybe they're being stealthy. Let me roll a stealth 19. Well, let's stick with the fact that you hear them ahead of time. Uh, does this sound like just regular rats, or is it like the rat creatures? I'm assuming they make different sounds. Uh, at this point, unless they're actually speaking in common, uh, you've basically experienced that the humanoid rats can certainly make rat sounds. So rat sounds don't tell you whether it's one or the other. Um, it just tells you at present uh, it could be both. It's hearing common coming from them that you would have the... It, like, doesn't work both ways. It works. I got both, you. You know what I mean? And it's enough of a sound that it's not like, oh, there's just, like, a couple little rats scurrying our way. It's, like, sounds like rats coming. Yeah, this is me telling you you're about to get an encounter with rats. What are you going to do about it? Yeah, I think we, um, what you thinking, Mountain? Should we break for it, or should we, uh, hold? What do you want to do? Just, like, ready ourselves and... So stand our ground? Yeah. Basically. Uh, could we... Maybe like ready an attack to like when we see them. Fuck this! I'm running. <laughs> I'm just gonna dash. All right. <laughs> so Machin is ready an attack, <laughs> and which way are you running? Uh, did they sound like they're coming from my uh, east or west? Um. I feel like Mountain is the reason I gave you guys the warning because he's got a passive of 16. So let's see. Mountain, make an intelligence check for me, please. Intelligence, okay. That's a 10. Ah, uh, they're coming from the west. That's the way I'm running. You're running to the west? Yeah, I'm running to the wild. I'm running, like, towards the entrance, like, to get the fuck out of here. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah, you're going to run into these. Uh, and, yeah, let me just go ahead and have you guys roll for initiative. Uh, do you want me to move myself or anything, or just leave it right where we're at? Um, yeah, you can make your first move. I would just go, just go for 30 feet right now. Yeah, I got a six for initiative. I'm eight total. You guys got a six and an eight? Yeah, I'm four plus four. Yeah, and I got a two plus four. <laughs> we're tired. That's where we were trying to rest. All right, so I think all of the rats are going to go before you guys, and then it'll be the two of you, and then all of the rats. So the swarm's going to go for Jinx. And I'm going to try to get three on each of you here. Oh, do I get a swing at the first one who came up to me? 
Uh, yeah, the first one to round the corner, I guess I should have figured out who was who um, as far as the initiative order. That's probably the only reason the initiative mattered. Uh, give me one second. All right, highest two act is on... Uh, what is that? That's one of the ones on Jinx. So let's go for... You can shoot against that rat. All right, let's see. For another two. For a total of, let's see, two, four. Uh, two to hit. Uh, ten to hit, but. Ten is going to miss. Yep. Oh, and uh, just to remember, I have 16 AC now as I'm holding the bow instead of two swords. All righty. Um, so we're going for. Grouping these up together. So the giant rats are going to attack as one attack right now, whether there's three of them. Um, and that'll give me a group kind of a average. So uh what is your AC with Jinx? And what and then you said sixteen with Mountain? Uh fourteen for Jinx. So I've got a plus two. Their proficiency in a D12, my target number is a 12 to hit Jinx. And that's okay. nice. I'm going to use... Oh, so sorry, go ahead. I feel like the crit throws off the ability to do that. Um, what were you thinking there, though? If all three are about to hit you? Oh, I mean, I'm going to use my uh, ability, my reaction, for sure. Yeah, so I really can't do the group attacks. So what is this one, though? Is this the cutting words, or are you going to do... Um, do you have a spell slot to do... can't think what it's called. Yeah, I have both of them right now. All right, so the first attack on you is a crit. It's worth making me roll the disadvantage thing. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to use my reaction and spend for uh, Silvery Barbs. Yeah, so 12, 15, 17 will still hit you, but it is not for a crit. Ooh, I don't even know if that even does matter. They're just rats. I mean, not getting a crit, it definitely matters. Yeah, but 2d4... Well, it's it's neither here nor there. Well, I only uh, have five hit points, so a crit and 2d4 would definitely be worse. Right, right. It's auto six damage plus a d4, basically, with the crit. Um, but yeah, it's going to do six damage, so it's going to drop you anyways. Um, and then... The next two, one is going to miss... And this is too many rats. Because they have pack tactics, too. This is far more than a medium-level encounter. Let's go like that. Um, so, one more was going to hit you there. Um, and that's going to do two death savings throws to you. And then the swarm is going to miss uh, with a 12. And then two on Malchin. Um, 17, 19 to hit with the first one. And then the second one is 10, 12. That one should be a miss. So the first one is going to deal three damage to you, Malchin. Oh, thank God. I'm still up. So, the rats swarm around from the west there. Um, as Jinx kind of runs into him, um, you see as they kind of, like, swarm over him, um, he is going to get kind of, like, collapsed to the ground. Um, as far as things go, that's about as dire as it can be from your perspective. Um, you have the two on you. One's able to bite into your, like, getting beneath your armor. Um, but he is in front. And you can react how you would at this point. Machin, what would you like to do? Oh, wait a second. Which one of you rolled higher here? Uh, Jinx rolled higher. So, 
So technically, Jinx, I need a death saving throw from you, um, and you already have two failed. All right, I'm going to spend my inspiration, just so you know, ahead of time. Gotcha. Yep, so roll this with advantage. Let's see a 20. Uh, what a 12. So on you, Mountain, what would you like to do? Oh, I'd like to attack the rat west of me, yes, because. And uh, let's see, I'm going to use my inspiration. Try to fish for a crit here. Not a crit, but an... 1923 to hit for five Solid damage. Uh, five damage, you're going to cut into it, leaving it bloodied. Uh, yeah, then I'm going to bonus action, just try to swing with my short sword for a total of, let's see, five, nine to hit. Is that with your modifier? Oh, yeah. You yeah, I rolled really low. Wait. Okay, okay. Because you've got damage I said in there. I got you. Yeah, nine is still a miss against these rats. Yes, I think that's all I could do for that. I'm not moving. As I'm surrounded at the moment. I'm going to swarm over Mountain with all of the rats here. Survive the ratmen to die to regular rats. Uh, you don't have any reason that I can't just use the full chart and just kind of assume it, though. And I don't have any reactions to stuff. I guess the crit is still like a weird thing, but I don't feel like that's that big of a deal. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to go for. It just makes it extremely swingy because they either all hit or all miss. No, no, they it doesn't work like that. It's. It's it gives a range. The difference is is on a crit. It's just kind of a weird thing. So you've got your swords out now, so your AC is seventeen. That is correct. Eleven plus two is twelve plus two more is thirteen. So that's gonna leave with one average hit. Um and it'll be for four damage to you. And I am down. Um, go for another death saving throw from Jinx here. On that 20. And then from Mountain. Pretty much need in that 20. That is a two. Um, yeah. Let me have, uh, I feel like let me have each of you roll a d10. Um, we'll have. Mountain be the tens, Jinx be the ones, and if you guys roll below a 50, the rat men are going to take you. If you guys roll above a 50, the rats are going to kill you here. So I guess really it's all on Mountain's roll. I got a 10. I think that is the most desirable number. As long as Justin didn't roll a 10, I think that's exactly what you wanted. Um, so yeah. Uh, at this point, I am going to capture these two characters, and you guys are going to be claimed by the rats. Oh, damn. I think basically from your perspectives here, as these rats kind of like swarm over you guys, uh, you see as like one of these little brain rats kind of like creeps around the corner and just like walks over top of um, Jinx, and Jinx just hears in his head, Rat God will keep you for now. Uh, and then pretty kind of, Actually, yeah, probably both of you can hear that like inside of your heads as this tiny little brain rat speaks to you. Um, and I think that's where we'll kind of call things at this point here. Um, we could go through character creations. This is going to be pretty similar to what happened to um, Justin's character, Dalton. Uh, where effectively he died in one of the occasions, and it was perfectly capable of being, you know, essentially a ransomed character. Um, I would say on some level, try to create somebody who has a vested interest in finding their friend, Jinx and or Malchin, 
uh, which for Mountain, you know, this could be the Dread Pirate Wesley that you create. For Drinx, Jinx, this could be one of the other orphans that you create. Or it could be somebody from the Order of, of Dyra. A um, lot of different ways to kind of go about that idea. But I think at this point, that's kind of what we'll go for for these characters is to um, invite you to basically create somebody who has a reason to find out what has happened to your friend. Once again, this has been DM Marathustra. Jared here. I wanted to thank you all for tuning in, listening to our session today. Thank you all very much. Please don't hesitate to ask any questions if you have them. Contact us and find us on Discord. Or if you have any questions, anything about social media, please get a hold of Dice Never Lie. Uh, it's been a pleasure running for all of you, uh, whether you are some of our players, past, present, or looking towards the future. Thank you very much. If you find this entertaining, please don't hesitate to like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. Uh, it's always much appreciated. Uh, I'm trying to do everything I can to make it so I can run more and more games for more people. I love to share tabletop RPGs. And most of all, I like to encourage uh, how much mental health, the catharsis that we can all gain uh, by role-playing through things that in real life are quite heavy upon our shoulders. And as always, just wanted to thank everybody for uh, taking the time to enjoy a little bit of our role-play inside of our little world in Tolis here. Uh, and then towards the future here, I'd like to invite you to check us out as we prepare to dabble into the homebrew setting that we will be entering soon here. If you have any interest in checking that out, please do not hesitate to find us on social media and try to get a hold of us within Discord so you too can join uh, what will be our new homebrew campaign uh, going live probably sometime around April here. But otherwise, be well, keep to stay tuned, and thank you all very much. Once again, this is Jared, the Amerithustra for Dice Never Lie. Thank you very much.